quick ramble before I go to bed. Um, tomorrow is the first debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, and it has been preceded by the release of a lot of information about Donald Trump's tax returns. So uh, whatever they were planning on talking about, I'm pretty sure that's going to come up. Um, either in the pre-game show, or the post-game show, or during the show. You know, sometimes uh, everybody has a plan till somebody gets punched in the face, right? So uh, there's that. Um, I'll be sure to watch it and break it down just like I did the uh, Democratic debates this year. And, you know, keep following politics and, and giving my take on it. But, uh, yeah, I have been busy. I'm still maintaining a 4.0 in grad school and want to keep it that way. And, uh, you know, it's crunch time. Um, just wrote a, a giant paper on process addictions. Uh, went well and even this far into my career I'm still learning stuff um, I think the biggest lesson that I've had to just soak in thus far from uh, I'd say the last two three weeks um, is basically from, from certain process addictions it's not the reward when you get it that uh, makes the uh, dopamine rush in your brain sometimes it's the near misses that are just as important and what do I mean by that if I'm if I'm you know too heady uh, let me break it down for you let's say you're at a slot machine you pull the lever right and you get just all random crap comes up on the slot machine. You completely lost. That's that's fine. You know, you, you put in twenty bucks. You got a few more pulls of this lever, so you pull it again, and then you get two cherries, and the next one is like a lemon, right? And you know that three cherries is like the jackpot, right? And you're like, oh my god, I was so close. That moment right there, where you were really close, even though you didn't win, is just as rewarding in your brain as somebody who wins. If I take it out of uh, that classic scenario of uh, the process addiction of gambling, and we, t we put it in, like, low-key gambling. When you know somebody who's been buying lottery tickets every week using the same numbers, loyally, every week, throw in $10, $20 at that lottery, be it Powerball or Mega Millions, the part of their week where they are dreaming about what they're going to do with that money is just as rewarding biochemically in their brain as winning the money. It is hardwiring the brain to know that every week they still have to buy that lottery ticket twice a week for, for those two particular lotteries. And uh, it keeps those lotteries going, you know. Um, I'm not a fan of it. I consider it uh, state-sponsored exploitation of the addictive process in people's brains. But whatever. Um, what I'm getting at is it really didn't sink in for me with these process addictions prior to this past two weeks that the near misses forge chemical paths in your brain just as much as successes.
that's what the the science pans out to and uh, that's how addictions of, of the uh, more you know compulsive variety the process addictions work and uh, explained a lot about my own life and I, I thought back about how I had operated in years previous especially especially we'll say 2013 and 14 when I had a business that ended up failing but I threw everything in the kitchen sink into it and came out with you know a lot of losses um, it was those near misses when I would have a good day of sales that look like I might actually be able to pull off this business, you know, being up and running and and being profitable. You know, I, I never feel like I got to the point where it was solidly profitable. I had a, a couple good days, and then I had a couple days that were near good, and uh, yeah, they kept me in. You know the, the the chance at uh, maybe one day making it kept me putting more of my funds into that endeavor, and I ended up losing. But also, here's the shit of it: uh, for those of you who might have had that dream of one day being a YouTube star, and then ten years later, you still have a very small audience. Sometimes you have a video that gets a couple thousand views. Sometimes you get a couple, you know, hundred thousand views on a video. I have, you know. And each time, it kind of reignites that passion within you. Like, hey, I might be able to uh, quit my day job. You know, I might be able to do this full time, you know. And what I have to say to that is the chances of you being that YouTuber who quits his day job and becomes wholly subsisted on YouTube and uh, makes a hefty profit doing it, you know, those guys that are making, we'll, we'll call the cutoff at least the poverty line will say like $30,000 a year. Those guys. There are less of them than there are lottery winners. Especially expanded out uh, for scale all over the globe with all the different lotteries that people have won. There are less of those very, very popular YouTubers who uh, actually are rich than there are lottery winners. And, uh, yeah. Some of us are, are fighting our uh, rugged uh, mountain man looks here, so uh, I'm not getting much of a push from boob effect. So, <laughs> you know, I have that, that going against me too, but what, what I've realized... Uh, is just another little angle at the same truth that uh... <sighs> sorry I don't understand wow that was uh, my digital assistant um, and I don't know why, why it went off but uh, I'm realizing part of the same truth in that uh there are things out there that are going to ensnare you and enslave you. Right now, I'm, I'm making free content for somebody else to watch on YouTube. Yeah, I'm going to make enough ad revenue this month to buy a, a, a pizza, right? But really, in, in the grand scheme of it, I've been doing this for more than 10 years, and 
I've been, you know, paid far less than minimum wage for what I've been putting out onto the internet. In fact, I've invested in uh, my time, effort, gas money, uh, computing power, uh, filming equipment, you know. I, I know I'm doing this one in, in terrible lighting, but I don't feel like uh, gussying myself up for this one. <laughs> What I'm saying is, uh, every time that I got those, uh, surprise, almost viral videos, every time I got that little bump of subscribers, it was, uh, it was that near miss that's just as addictive as actually hitting the jackpot. And I guess that's really why it's been, you know, a little bit more sporadic when you hear from me. Because, uh, I actually do have it in me that you guys don't need to hear my opinion on every goddamn thing. You know, I'm not going to be that person anymore that looks up what's trending for the day and then talks about it just so you can hear me yap. Um, when it's important, when it's something that I really feel like putting out in the world, that's when I'm going to hit that record button. Because I don't feel as enslaved, you know. And, you know, maybe some people figure that out without doing ten years of almost free labor for a company, but, uh, You know, I had fun. We have fun. I'll see you after the debates.